Good morning. Today we focus our chapels this week on Jesus is our all. Everything that we should need and everything that um, is necessary for our lives. And today's focus is going to be on Jesus bringing us peace. We're going to start and open with our opening sentences. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise God in his sanctuary. We'll continue with the singing of two verses of our hymn. focus is on Jesus' peace today, and um, we're going to be reading in the Gospel of John, verses, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And we see something that, that speaks to us, even on a, a day with the kinds of activities that are all going on. We're going to be talking about uh, the disciples' fear, and their doubt, and their longing for peace. And I think in a lot of ways we can associate with some of those fears and the doubts of what's going to happen next and the peace that's needed. Um, and we look into those verses from John 20, 19 through 31, where Jesus, after his death and resurrection, so we're shortly after Jesus' death and resurrection, appears to his disciples offering them peace that maybe we don't understand, but we certainly can appreciate. So we look at this section of scripture. Let's explore how the peace of Christ not only calmed the disciples, troubled and fearful hearts, but also continues to bring us serenity or peace to our lives today. We read from the first section. On the evening of that first week, day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jesus, Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. I remember fifth grade. Um, just moved from Arizona, from, to Arizona, from Wisconsin, and I was trying to get to know some of the new kids before school started, and had a sleepover with a friend named Johnny. And Johnny and I spent the afternoon, we went and saw the new Star Wars movie, which was the actual first original one. Came out in 77. It was, by that time, it was 79. It was a matinee, but we never got to go. We, we as a family, I was the oldest of seven kids. We didn't spend anything on movies or anything like that. So that was a big deal. We went to Star Wars. We're having a great day. Came home. We're eating some pizza. And then we went out night because in Phoenix, you do a lot in the evenings when it's really, really pleasant. It's not so hot during the day. We're in the backyard looking up, and we see lights moving across the sky. And we could tell what was an airplane. You, you knew it was an airplane. But there were other lights that were moving across the sky. And we let our imagination go wild, and we had just seen this movie of Star Wars and all the things that are going on in space, and we totally freaked out. And it seemed like those lights were following us no matter where we went. If we went and hid behind something, those lights were there. And then we'd go someplace and those lights, finally we were to the point we had to go inside. We were just, now we found out later it was satellites and that was quite calming. Okay, I understand that there's some satellites out there, but we didn't know if this was Darth Vader 
if this was UFOs, if this was somebody else coming from another planet that we just hadn't known about, totally freaked us out. What are your fears? You're worried about today? Should you be worried about today? I mean, if you look at the news, we get all kinds of things. Hundreds of schools are going to be closing for the total eclipse. They're declaring national emergencies across the United States. April 8th, solar eclipse could impact power. Here's why. They're expecting that cell phones aren't going to be working, that electrical systems are going to be overdone. Three to five days of darkness are being thrown out there. What are you going to do with three to five days of darkness? It's telling us that, did you see the path is going through seven cities called Nineveh? And if you know anything about Nineveh, we should all be repenting. And then add to that, the eclipse is going to get done, and we're going to get a trillion bugs to come out of the ground. <laughs> cool. All right? Are you scared? Maybe some people are. There's a lot of fear out there in the world. And there's a lot of people that have all kinds of fears. And then we get back to our verse. The disciples were huddled together in fear, their hearts heavy with the uncertainty of what was next. Their world had been shattered by crucifixion. crucifixion. They saw Jesus. They saw him die. And even locked doors couldn't keep out the fear that gripped their souls. Yet in the midst of their fear, Jesus appeared. His first words to them were not words of rebuke or anger. Can you imagine? If I would have appeared, I probably would have said, what are you guys doing? Why didn't you listen to me? I've been telling you for three years what's going to be going on. Why aren't you listening? Why are you so afraid? Instead, Jesus, in that moment, comes and says, peace be with you. He shattered that fear that bound the disciples, flooding their hearts with his divine peace. When we go on to verse 20, and after he had said this, he showed them their, his hands and their sides, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The sight of the Lord's wounded hands and sight served as a reminder of his sacrificial love. We knew that this was Jesus because we had seen the marks. We, we saw what happened to him on that cross. And in that moment, the disciples' fear was turned to joy. They realized that the one who bore their sins on the cross was now standing before them victorious over death. The scars of Jesus became symbols of hope, assuring him them of his unfailing love and presence. And we go on. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin... Their, sin is, are, are, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Not only did Jesus give peace to the disciples, but then he commissioned them to be bearers of his peace to the world. Now, maybe for some of them that was pretty scary too. But knowing that their Savior, who they had seen die, was re resurrected and standing in front of them, um, they knew that they could have this power to go and do what Jesus was asking them. Their mission was grounded in the power of Christ's peace, enabled them to overcome all obstacles and concerns with an unwavering faith. Now there's Thomas. He wasn't in the room. Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my fingers where his nails were, I'll put my hands in, and put my hands into the side, I will not believe. Thomas doubts serve as a reminder of the struggle that many of us face too, believing without seeing. Like Thomas, we may have doubts and uncertainties, and we may want tangible evidence of God's presence in our lives. I can imagine there's probably one or two of you that are going, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to look at that eclipse today, but I'm going to because I don't really believe all those other people. I've got to have the tangible evidence of having my retinas burned. <laughs> right? There's going to be somebody. And um, Thomas is that, is that person. I've got to see it. I, don't, I can't believe it. 
26. A week later, after the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, through the, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to them, My Lord and my God. Despite his doubt, notice that Jesus didn't cast him aside. He didn't yell at him. Instead, he graciously appeared to Thomas, offering him the evidence he sought. Jesus met Thomas in his place of doubt, extending his peace to him in a profound display of grace and love. Like Thomas, we want to encounter the living Christ through his word and experience his peace in the midst of our doubts and understandings. Where can we find that? The Bible. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in the book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Jesus' words demonstrate faith. They, they tell us a exactly what faith is, and that's the ability to believe without seeing. Well, Thomas was blessed to see and believe. What a great blessing that is reserved for all of us who have faith in Christ without seeing him physically. Hebrews 11, verse 1, tells us, Faith is being sure about what we hope for, being convinced about things we do not see. In John 20, 19 through 31, we witness the changing power of Christ's peace in the lives of the disciples. Just as Jesus brought his disciples amongst their fear and doubt, so too he offers us his peace today. May we, like the disciples, open our hearts to the peace that only Christ can give. Allow it to calm our fears, strengthen our faith, and empower us to be bearers of his peace to the world. We'll continue with our responsive sentences. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. Lord, keep, or keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. And you have seen your announcements. Have a good day.